Well, good morning. Guess what? We going on a trip right there. Look at him. He's got his little bag. Look at all these stickers. Actually, I did want to point this out right here because this is pretty cool. This is the sign of a true traveler right here. And McCoy is a true traveler. He's got all these. He's got Idaho on here, Knoxville, and the Bahio sticker, which is cool. Is that South Dakota? South Dakota. Alabama, um, Maine. Yeah. We have Portugal, Costa Rica, Arkansas. Montreal. Montreal on that side. Very cool. We're adding them up. Cool. All right. So look, we're gonna add a sticker today. So you're asking yourself, well, what the heck are we doing today? Well, we're not. We're not. Uh, I'm not gonna say what we're doing. That's what I'm gonna do. We're gonna keep it a mystery for a little bit. It won't be long. Don't worry. Just, just, just hang out just a minute because we're going on a road trip, and I've got a surprise for you. A surprise. A true surprise. Oh, I forgot to have my glasses. Check, check these videos out. Look at this frame color. It's like, uh, I don't know, what, gray turtle, gray tortoise, gray matte tortoise, I don't know. This one is Stiltsville. All right, we ready. We will need these today. By the way, we are, we're, we're gone, I can't tell you where. I just can't. So just bear with me, it won't take long. And um, we're going to the airport, that's where we're going. We're only a few weeks away from uh, first term of the year. And what we're going to be doing is Bassmaster Opens on the Southern Division. So we're going to start off on Okeechobee here in a few weeks. And, you know, I wasn't going to fish the Opens at all. I, I kind of wasn't thinking about it, to be honest with you. Of course, they're coming to Okeechobee, and I'm like, there's just no way that I could not, not fish a tournament here at my home lake. So, you know, the lake's fishing... The lake's fishing good. It's fishing tough when when it boils down to the amount of pressure that it's getting in these tournaments. But just like a regular day of fishing, you can just go out and go fishing. It's amazing. It's so much fun right now. So many big ones being caught. Will it take a lot of weight to win? Absolutely. It's a three-day tournament, so most likely 70 pounds. Because I think somebody that's going to win the tournament is going to catch a couple mid-20s. But here's the thing about Okeechobee, and it's always this way, no matter how, no matter what's going on. It's like you can go out and bust a 25-pound bag, and then you can come in with seven pounds the next day. It's just because these, these fish are moving into these areas, getting ready to spawn. You hit them right, and then, you know, after a couple of days, all that kind of dries up. So, you know, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, my goals this year are pretty simple, guys. I want to win a couple tournaments this year. I mean, I know that's everyone's goal, but... That's really, really what we need to do. So I got a question for you. Love to get your response on this. What are some things that we should do on tour this year for the Elite uh, Series? You know, we're gonna film them, of course. We're gonna do the whole thing. Canberra's back, Aries back. Uh, give us some ideas. Some little pranks maybe that we can pull on the boys. I mean, Canterbury got me pretty good last year a couple of times, so I need, to, I need to come up with some good ones. So give, give us some ideas. made it on the flight headed to Atlanta that's where we're going but that's not our final destination and I'd say I'm excited about this little surprise guys um, been working on this for a few years actually and uh, it's cool it's cool it's gonna be really 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 an awesome thing cannot wait to see it feel it touch it it's gonna be good We made it. We made it to the secret destination. It's a little chilly. You know, we haven't had any cold weather yet in Florida, but I think I think the cold weather is supposed to hit this week. I, I've been watching everybody's Instagrams and they're talking about all the snow that was hitting Arkansas and Alabama and places like that. And we're supposed to get some pretty cold weather 
Is that our Uber over there? Pablo? Yes, sir. How you doing, man? This is one of these magical Ubers. Let's just guess. We go like this, and then it just automatically teleports. Bam, just like, that was an awesome teleportation in the Uber. Some kind of special deal going on right there. We made it. We're not at the uh, airport anymore. Thank you, sir. Bye. All right, so I'm still not gonna tell you where we are. I'm not gonna show you the sign, but we are at a facility. All right, so we're getting close to the reveal. I'm just kind of giving you a little, little sneak peek. Could be a gigantic new sponsorship with a paper towel company or toilet paper. Remember that prank that Canterbury did? Got something coming for you, dude. Yeah. They sent me a new unit. I'm a little nervous, to be honest with you, because this is a, this is a big a big deal. It's a big deal. We've worked for for about two years. I've been waiting on this to happen, and it's 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 about to happen. And I've been waiting to say this. I've been waiting to say what's behind should i pick door number one door number two door number three that isn't that the game show it was like the whole if you open up one it's like a bunny rabbit in the cage you open up number two it's like a tricycle and you open up number three and it's the big grand prize so i'm, I'm thinking i'm thinking i'm gonna go with door number one let's see what's behind door number one boy oh boy oh boy Check it out, dude. 42LR, brand new Freeman right here, guys. Oh, look at this thing, man. Look at this thing. This thing is massive. I'll tell you what. The vision that Billy had when he started on this journey 15 years ago or so, he's changed the entire offshore market with, with this design. The, it, the monohulls can't compete. I mean, he's changed He's changed the game. These boats are made for hardcore fishing, and that's what we do with it. You know, we've got the other boat down in the Keys, and that's what we do. Uh, I'm just truly honored to actually be able to run a boat like this. It's a, it's a big investment for me. You know, we've got a, a business down in the Florida Keys where we're running charters down there with Sam Malazzo, and so we're able to make it work. But I tell you, what an awesome package. I can't wait to get up inside, check this thing out, see all the new bells and whistles. We got some new speakers from Kicker. I want to see how they did the uh, the amp setup. Got some new Garmin's on there. There's so many cool things that we've got going on with this boat. And then, dude, I mean, look at these motors right here, guys. We have four 300 Yamahas. These are the XTO frames. These are the brand new 300s from Yamaha. They've been out for a little while now. They got internal steering in them. Super, super reliable. We've had them on the other boat. And zero issues. Zero issues. We did our normal maintenance, and that's bulletproof. These things have been great. And it's a really good weight to horsepower ratio on the back of this Freeman. This 300 package, when you're looking at all the different options out there at Motors, the 300 horsepower option on a 42 and on the 37s is a great choice. So and that's what we've gone with here. And, and uh, it moves the boat fast, guys. I mean, it's a 70 mile an hour boat with a tower. That's, that's, that's quick. Dude, this, wow. What are you doing, dude? Oh, hey, what's up? <laughs> I didn't even know you were here. Yeah, well, I couldn't see out. you. That's what's up, buddy? Doing, Good to see you again. Thanks, Good sir. See you, man. Welcome back. World famous Scott Cawthorn right here. So when you when you, when you you call up Freeman, if you ever decide to buy a boat, when you call up Freeman, it's the man you call. You call Scotty, and he will work through the whole process with you. It's so seamless. It's not scary, by the way. He's a great guy. And, uh, you know, just roll through the whole process. and get the whole thing queued up. Yeah, it was, it was cool. Obviously, the second build with you, uh, you knew more about it, so it was a little more educated process. Yeah. The stereo, is, as your first one, was insanely over the top. Great job on the color scheme. I like the little bit darker color we went on this boat than we did yeah. the first one. Yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Kind of blends in more. I know there's that, that bass boat in the background <laughs> that always keeps us going, but uh, um, you man, think I'm you're gonna it. break that record in this boat? I tell you, man, that's a, that's a hard record to beat right there. Yeah, I mean, that is a got, very, We got really lucky very, with the 76, I'm not sure. I Is think this. 80? No, he's 76. We could. I know, but can we get to 80? I think we. I, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. That would be crazy. I, you know, the last three or four years, what he's talking about, guys, is we, we caught 76 sailfish in one day, released uh, down the Keys, which shattered the record. And uh, it was a big deal. It was all over the internet. We filmed it. It was a great, great deal. We did it in the boat. We, went in, we didn't have the boat more than maybe a month, month and a half. Right. And we crushed it. So, um, yeah, I mean, this is the boat to do it. And that's the thing. It's like, 
you know, somebody says, well, what's the difference between a Freeman and what's the difference between getting a monohull of some sort? Well, here's why, for fishing. Look at the front deck, okay? We got all this room up here. We can run to the front. We can cast on fish. We can run to the back and get a bait. We can cast off the back. You can send two to the front, two to the back, and the boat's not doing this, okay? Boat does this in the waves, but it doesn't do this that much. So you're very stable. You can run up and down the boat and cast, and you can maneuver around in those, in those swells, and, and it just it just performs so much better. That day we were out there, it was like six footers. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. And, and there was all these other boats out there fishing, and everybody caught a bunch of fish. And, and most of the other boats, <laughs> We're having a we're really having a struggle, especially people that went to the bow. Right. You know they were really falling down and getting oh, yeah. thrown around everywhere, and uh, you know what you guys have done here, at Freeman, is is awesome. This 42 is the perfect size boat for that. So we did the first thing we did is we did deck it. Okay. Everybody thinks that all marine flooring is the same. They think oh it's just marine flooring and it's all the same material and it's just a different company behind it. Wrong. It's not. There's a difference. There's a difference in the quality of it, and there's a difference in the open cell foam versus closed cell foam, and you know all this. Oh, yeah. And Decket is what we use. It's what a lot of customers here at Freeman use. Um, it, it's it's a it's a better product in my opinion. It doesn't hold a stain. We you know we did a lot of fishing trips out of my boat this last last two or three years. Zero staining in the boat. There's no stains in the boat on the deck. It washes off no problem, and it holds up well. And if you ever have to replace a panel, this is the biggest advantage. If you ever have to replace a panel due to something, you just pull it up and they'll cut you another one and you can put it down yourself or send the Decket guy out to do it. And there's no residue left over. It's not peeling up in pieces like some of the other products out there. It peels up like a potato chip and that's a problem. You don't want to, when you go to pull that marine flooring up and it starts pulling off in little chunks, you got a problem. You know, we did all the, the dual seating. This is, what do you call this, the dual? dual yeah, the, the dual seating. So we offer a bench and a bucket configuration. Yep. And people, when they think of bench, they think this kind of really simplified bench look. But no, uh, the, the Freeman benches, they graded uh, cup holders, yep. um, the bolsters, everything else is much more comfortable. But some people opt for the individual buckets. Yep. I personally like the bench configuration. kind of gives you a little more too. spread out. Yeah. Um, Especially for the kids. Out. You know, we've got a lot of kids on the boat. And, they, you know, they can lay down and take a nap. You know, people can kind of squeeze in here. If you have four small kids, they can all get here in the back. With the individual buckets, you're a little bit more, a little bit more, you know, only that many people. So I, I did the double row, the double row bench, and uh, it's good. Dash is laid out well. Got the binnacles here, got the Hellmaster 2 joystick. This is great for, for docking. You know, you get in those windy situations, and Yamaha has done a great job, and you just basically. Like, it's kind of crazy how you can just hit this thing over and right. the boat will just crab right into the spot. It's amazing. The it it really feet. is. It really is. So, we got the big uh, the big units here on the dash. 24 inch Garmin's. The radio controls right here. Man, this thing's really, really awesome. It's very similar to layout as what we had on the last boat. But I tell you, new switches here, which is great. We had the regular toggles before. Right. So this is all new and this is all new up here as well. So that's great. And these are the new, and I'm not sure the model of this particular kicker right here. It is a new one that Kicker came out with for the Marine Division. And you can see how this, this center part is different from in the past. But Kicker is really making a, a big splash uh, in the Marine industry when it comes to uh, Marine Audio. So they've they've stayed consistent. And um, you know, there's only there's really only a couple people out there to choose from, to be honest with you. When you when you get a boat of this caliber, you don't want to put junk in. That's why I put the kicker in. And there's only a couple companies out there to consider, but I strongly recommend considering doing kicker. Uh, if you build a boat out, or if you're going to re, you know, redo some stereo options in your any boat, any boat. I've got them in the bay boat, and I've got them in my bass boat, and they uh, they hold up very, very well. All right, on this boat here, there's also another configuration. Scott, explain this right here. You call this the cooler option, right, I guess, yeah, or deluxe tackle center. So deluxe for, tackle center. For the, right. the hardcore fishing you guys are obviously doing. Yeah. Because that that raised area, kind of a countertop yep. height. Um, gives you access quickly to your, your tackle trays. Yeah, there's one here, but remember, yeah. on the big tackle station on the side, yes. it's slammed full. And these so, are bigger, this is good. Right. So hey, if we're going grouper fishing, let's put the grouper box in That's there, right. take the, the yes. trolling box out. Good. Then we're ready to go quick, with your pliers, good. everything else up top. I'm seeing the little things that y'all have done. Sure from four years ago, because mm -hmm. this was shallower. Now this is right. deep. Yep, yep. And that's perfect. Closing. Yes, All that fits things. a full-size box. And the reason I went with this option, a lot of people like the, the dual seating back here. So they'll have two seats. And so that's great for people that want to sit here and look backwards and maybe be part of the action. But we fish a bunch, and as we're running out in the Keys, we're rigging tackle right here. We're pulling lines. We're tying leaders. The boat's moving. You can lay your hooks out and do all that right here. And so I like it for that reason. And then plus when you're at the sandbar, 
great little place to Absolutely. have your snacks and your drinks. And, and even that, obviously in a running situation, you're not going to want to, but in a trolling side, I spend a lot of time sitting up here. You raise you oh, yeah. up, mm -hmm. you can see the, the spread a lot better. Yep. So I, I do like this in a scenario, yep. especially the hardcore platform, is you yep. definitely can sit here comfortably. Yep. That's why I went with this, for sure. You know, a lot of people like the, the seating in the back. It just depends on what you're into, but sure. I, I'm 100% I'm always going to do this right here. Because, like I said, I'll sit just like this. Plus, I want people back here in the back that are like, like concentrating on fishing, not right. not relaxing and taking naps and seats. <laughs> That's up there. <laughs> Want to take a nap in a seat? Right. You get that there. You get back here. They're like, you're in the way. <laughs> we need everybody out of the way. Now you got to uh, you got this little deal right here. Nice little rocket launcher, and this is a magnetic. Yep. It's on uh, top. You can yeah. Use my my cheat key right, yep. There's one right there. there. Yeah. <laughs> this is great to put all your hooks and every everything right there. And um, yeah, you got also you've got your dual four live wells is what we went with which some people can do the option for storage right or this right. can be some type right. of storage and then typically if you're going to do that you're going to want a, a solid lid because with a see-through lid obviously you got sun baking through over there would be inside of there yeah but um there's much live bait you guys are doing down there yeah um, and you can keep this dry you don't have to have it full of water right. uh, to use it as dry storage yeah, yeah. as well so depending on what you're doing for the day we, we use it a lot we use both of these a lot in the keys because we, we go heavy bait when we can get the bait during sailfish season or different times of the year we load up and we put it in pens and we'll take a lot of bait out fishing when we're tuna fishing and stuff sure so it's great to have these four wells and, the, and they work they work well and then you've got all your big storage back here which is for your sea chests and all your all, all this really good i like all that that looks a little different i like that get your fuel yeah, cut so off and fuel selector valves yeah. in the scenario yeah. you needed because we have two giant gas tanks here yes. we got two 400 gallon tanks for a grand total of 800 gallons, 800 gallons which um, is a lot for a boat when you think of 800 gallons in a boat and i ask people all the time different boats that they have i'll say hey how many how many gallons is that boat and it's a big boat you know they're like i got 450 and i'm like Dang, dude. I mean, we carry 800, and that's the reason it's called a 42LR, which stands for long range. This boat was built so you can go on those long trips to the other side of the Bahamas, or you can take off and go way out in the Gulf of Mexico and go on those oil rig fishing trips. And so, you know, you don't have to worry about fuel, and you're not limited. You can go farther. You can get there quicker. There's so many advantages to this boat. We've got two libels back here in the back as well. This is the ones that we use pretty much 24-7 right here. And the way that we set this up, I, I didn't do tuna tubes on this boat because we don't do a lot of the big big stuff for marlin and things like that in the Keys. We're, we're pretty much sail fishing or you know doing some tuna fishing, but we, we don't need tuna tubes to go out and do the, the crazy stuff. But if we did want to do tuna tubes, we can obviously add some of those little aftermarket tuna tubes and, and all that. But we're, we're having, the, having the two tanks back here on the back, plenty of live oil space for all of your live bait. And these tanks work really well. Uh, this is the best marine, I believe, in this one. So we have two of them. And the best marine pumps are great. These are what they call a sea chest. And that way um, they hold their prime really well. And they're gonna keep good water flow and good oxygen going into all of these, of these live wells. So it keeps your bait good and lively. There's nothing worse than spend all that time catching bait and it all dies. What's up? Check it out, we got a toilet this time, which is, Sam's gonna love. Sam's gonna love the bathroom option. Yeah. But at least it's on one side and you have all your storage. It's actually not bad. It's actually a pretty convenient little comfortable little little spot. <laughs> yeah. All right, let's check this out right here. Oh yeah, look at that. Oh yeah, got a little bit of kicker amps right there on the wall. Thing smells good too. All right. And you know what we do in this room right here is we keep a lot of our storage bins in here and stuff like that for extra rain gear, paper towels, all that kind of stuff. There's plenty of storage on the boat. So this isn't the main storage area. So that's why you can put a bathroom in this thing and it'd still be really functional. All right, this little spot right here is the girls' favorite spot. This is where Hillary and Amelia pretty much spend their day on the water right here. And it also is a fish box. So underneath this, you have two separated giant fish boxes that we keep. Usually on my boat, I keep a lot of supplies and stuff in this one. This side right here, usually we fill it up with ice and so we put all of our fish for the day. All right, on the 42, it's 600 each side. So it's 1,200 insulated here, and you get another 400 and a 400 there. So a lot of stuff. I've never used these for fish boxes. I use that for just storage. We, um, honestly, when we designed this boat, we had this envisions of it, but the sheer volume of marine right. life yeah. you can put in this box, you really, most of these get used for clean ice or even dry storage. Right, 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 uh, yeah. Occasionally the guys in the Gulf would get the big yellow fin will have an application they fill it all right. up, but we normally use it uh, 
Yeah, I haven't caught that many fish yet. <laughs> <laughs> so we added the step into the bean bag box, which is your giant oversized box there, because it was so large to step in and out. Oh yeah. Right. Okay, good. You're dropping your flyer down there. All right. If a big storm comes up. That's right. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs> Knock on it, Scotch. <laughs> you're gonna... <laughs> oh, well, we locked him in there. <laughs> hey, you could lay down in here. Hey, my kids spend a lot of time in there. We have a box put, light in there and everything. Dank put a. Uh, that could be a sleeping spot. Typically has your water tanks, more storage, of course. That's how you get to the hall if you need to do any work on like a transducer or anything like that. So tons of storage. I mean, again, you know, when you look at this boat and you say, oh. Wow, I would have not put the toilet in. I would just have that for storage. You don't need it. You've got all this storage, a gigantic amount of storage on both sides here. So this thing's laid out awesome, guys. Um, I think we're gonna go put it in the water, do a little rev up on it. Let's go see how she rides. Let's go check it out. It feels so weird to be in this boat in a freshwater river. The Cooper River. That being the Cooper River, right? Yes, Cooper River. It's supposed to be really good bass fishing. I think this is where, like, they talk about catching big bags up here. Oh, yeah. yeah like 20 actually, pound bags, 25 pound bags. They have some. Uh, the water looks good. Yeah, this looks legit. <laughs> now, we, now, did you bring, we should have brought a fishing rod. Uh, how did you not travel with one? I, I figured you had like one of your I had one of those, or... one of those uh, travel rods from back in the day. <laughs> Whip it out. She always have one. Thing's loud. This thing is like sounds up like you can't hear it properly through the through the camera, trust me, but the bass is so deep with these twelves. Really, 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 really nice. All right, let me explain how Kicker set this boat up. So what we did here in the T-top is we did four eights. These are the eight inch coaxials, great speakers, obviously. They're in the tower, that's great sound up there. We had six and a halves last time, we went with eights this time. We have six 12s. We have a 12 here on the tackle station area. We have a 12 here at the helm seating area. And we have two 12s on the bow as well. Now what we did here is we put the brand new, these are the brand new Kicker eights. And these right here are a little bit different than the ones that we had last year. So we're really excited about these. These are supposed to be the high-end new ones from Kicker. I'm super excited about that. Again, there's five amps on this boat and it sounds amazing. I wish you could truly hear how amazing it does sound, but Kicker did a fantastic job once again on outfitting this boat and I'm super excited about it. You know what I love about the, the, the I love a lot about the boat, but here's the best feature. I think when, when somebody's in the boat for the first time and you get this thing up on plane, it's a totally different experience getting on plane in, in, in the Freeman than any other boat I've ever been to. It just goes shoop, up on plane and it's just like a magic carpet right here. It's the coolest thing. Every time I take somebody up for the first time and we get on plane, they go, dang, <laughs> that thing's awesome. Because normally a big heavy boat's like Rawr, taking forever. This thing is awesome. Let's go. Just like that. I mean, boom, it's up on plane. And the other beautiful thing about this boat is how slow I can ride. And in the Keys, I love this. We cruise around in the Keys, we go to the restaurants, we go out to the sandbar, we go to the light, we go fishing. We're cruising right now at 2,500 RPMs. We're only going about 20 miles an hour. And that's, that's an amazing thing to go ride this steady at this slow pace have full control of the boat. Sure. Normally in a big model hole, you're dipped Water, down, right, right. kicking a big wave. Yeah, we can walk around comfortably. Yeah. 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 Stole it. Almost 70. It was 69.7 or 8. 
I know. I, I, I was I was thinking like I'm in this little canal, in the woods. <laughs> let's just let's just keep it between the rails. There you go. Guys, what an awesome experience. Thank y'all so much for sticking in this video. My big surprise, 42 feet of a big surprise right there. Um, I tell you what, hats off to everybody that partnered on this boat. Freeman, of course, building the best boat on the planet. Uh, Garmin, Yamaha, Decket, Sign Zoo, Starbright's going to keep this thing clean. Uh, Yamaha, I mean, can't say enough about everybody that's participated on this build. And I can't wait to get it back down south. And listen, if you ever want to go out on this boat, it's real simple. We've got a website called viceversafishing.com. Sam Alazo is our captain that runs it. We do charters down there in the Keys. We go to the Bahamas. We do all kind of cool stuff. So if you want to go on this boat on a great fishing trip, contact us and we'll set that up for you. And uh, that's it, guys. We're out of here. We're going to hang out here at the factory a little bit more. We're going to do a little how it's made video coming up soon. So on the channel, you're going to see that how it's made. You're going to see the whole process of how a boat like this is put together at Freeman. And, uh, and that's it, guys. We're heading back to Florida. So thanks so much for hanging out. Appreciate you so much. See ya.